all right everybody i'm doing this video here because i got a message for one of my brothers uh brother harrison now this video can also be used to help others about this whole subject of the trinity of well as well but brother harrison you know um i it's come to my knowledge that and it actually been came to my knowledge a while back when I did my video on talking about the Trinity that I believe you possibly felt some way about some things I've said in regards to the Trinity. But I want to talk about that today. You know, we as fellow believers, we believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And, you know, in the Bible says that, you know, that you know we got biblical biblical evidence that those who believe man they were together you know so we got to stick to each other you know we may have a difference on some things as believers and but a lot of times we allow uh differences to interfere with relationships not only that but we also allow correction to cause us to want to cut people off or not deal with people and stop watching them and things like that. But as believers, if someone tried to correct us, we have to humbly accept it. And then another thing we could do is if someone say something contrary than what we believe, we got to be like, okay, well, let me revisit this and let me make sure I got it right because they presenting some scriptural evidence that may prove that I could be in error. So what I want to do is I want to be humble. And that's what we all need to do as believers. We need to be humble. Don't get offended. And let's just, let's look at what someone is showing us. And let's reanalyze, you know, our view. If someone shows some scripture. Now, see, the thing is, let's say, for example, I said some things that you may have been uncomfortable with in regards to my conversation about Trinity. And so I believe you probably stopped watching me or stopped dealing with me, you know, for some time. But what we have to do is if someone says something contrary, just like me, if you come and say something to me that's contrary than what I'm preaching, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to relook at those script. I'm going to look at the scripture that you show me. And I do that even when all Truth 64 have uh, said things. He have said things or may provide a scripture. I go back and look at it. And I read it in context and I see if it's accurate. You know, if he's accurate or, you know, or if I'm wrong. And then that way I could give the correction. I could correct myself. Because the thing is, we never want to have pride, you know, have that type of pride to where no one can correct us. You know, we may take a certain view. Maybe we was taught a certain thing. But... If someone shows us that we could be in error, then let's just look at it. Let's just see, okay, am I in error? Because the thing is, we never want to assume we right. We always want to make sure that we got God's word right. Because we don't want to handle God's word deceitfully. But in regards to the subject about the Trinity, now let's talk about that. I believe you became uneasy with some things I said. Now, let's discuss the Trinity for a second. Now... To my knowledge, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, when you say that there's a trinity, what do you mean by that? Because to my knowledge, people believe that the trinity is three co-equal gods or three separate gods. Or, I mean, if I'm wrong, let me know. Because I can only go by what I see or what people say the trinity is. So if the trinity is three separate gods, then that's what I want to talk about today. But I'm going to go to a couple of a few scriptures that's going to show Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and I'm going to show you what I believe. Let's look at it. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14 says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's one, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, there's two, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. So the Holy Ghost. So I see we got the Lord Jesus Christ. We got God. And we got the Holy Ghost. So we see three there. Okay. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in God, the Father. And I believe in the Holy Ghost. That's three. Let's look at Luke 
chapter 3, verse number 22. Luke chapter 3, verse number 22. It says, And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and the vo and a voice from heaven which says, Thou art my beloved Son, talking about the Son, and the Father, I am well pleased. In thee I am well pleased. So we got the Holy Ghost descending on Jesus. We got the voice from heaven. And the voice from heaven is saying, this is my beloved son. So there's three. We got the son, the father, and the Holy Spirit right there again. Now, with that being said, we see three. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Now, Jesus did say that he was going to leave and he was going to send a comforter. All right. So the son is going to leave, go back to the father. That's two. And he was going to send the Holy Ghost. That's three. Okay. Now, let's look at 1 John chapter 5. And then I'm going to be done with scripture here. I just want to show something. 1 John chapter 5 verse 7 says, For there are three that are bad record in heaven. Let's see what those three are. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. All right. So, I agree that there is a Father. There is the Son and there is the Holy Ghost. I agree with those three. So now if you say those three is Trinity, then I say I agree with that. I agree with the three. There's a Father, there's Son, there's Holy Ghost. But the difference may be is, uh, let's see, the difference is uh, are they three separate beings in heaven? So is it three thrones? I know people often ask, well, is it three thrones in heaven? Well, I can't read three thrones in heaven, but I'm going to tell you what I can read. I'm going to tell you what I can read. All right. I can read that there, there's one on the throne. Revelations 4, 2 talks about the one on the throne. I can read how the father said in Hebrews 1 that the son's throne was forever and ever. I can read how he was going to sit, that the son was going to sit upon the throne of, of his father, David. I can read those thrones. Now, I can't read a, a third throne for the Holy Ghost, but <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what the scripture says. And this is why I said, um, uh, let me read the scripture first, then I'm going to tell you what I said. So, this is why I continue in what I'm about to, in what I teach. 1 John chapter 2, verse 23 and 24 says this, Whosoever denieth the Son, well, let's start at 22. Start at 22. Who is a liar but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denied Father and Son. Now, pay attention. He denied Father and Son. All right? Now, verse 23 says, Whosoever denied the Son, the same have not the Father, but he that acknowledges the Son have the Father also. So, once again, we see Son and we see his Father. All right? Verse 24, let that, abide, let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. So the Apostle John tells us to continue in the Son and in the Father. Now he also says in the book of 2 John chapter 1 verse 9, he says, <clears throat> whosoever transgresseth, and abide not in the doctrine of Christ, have not God. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ, he have both Father, the Father and the Son. So once again, he teaching us that we can have both the Father and the Son. Now, it's also something I want to show you. Look at verse 3. 2 John 1, 3 says this, Grace be with you, mercy and peace. Now look at who he acknowledged. Look at who he acknowledged. And Paul did the same. But he said, grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father, this God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father. So we see we do have a Father and we do have a Son. But whenever John acknowledges anyone, any heavenly beings, he acknowledged the Father and he acknowledged the Son. Now the Apostle Paul also did the same thing. Let's look at 1 Corinthians. Let's look at... Um, Let's look at chapter one. Let's look at verse three. He says, grace be with you. Same thing John said. Grace be with you and peace from God our Father 
and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So notice how Paul and John, they keep acknowledging the Father and the Son. Now, did you notice that they are not acknowledging? As a matter of fact, let's get Peter real fast. I got to give you Peter. I gave you John. I gave you Paul. Now, let's get Peter. Now, Peter says in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right? So, he said, Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then, also, in, uh, what's that? In, in 2 Peter chapter 2, Peter says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ and of Jesus our Lord. So Peter even acknowledging the Father and he's acknowledging the Son. But notice these three apostles are not acknowledging the Holy Ghost when they greet. All right, when they greet, they're not acknowledging Holy Ghost, but they acknowledging the Father, God the Father. And they acknowledging Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, the Son of God. They acknowledging Father and Son. So, <clears throat> John says that we ought to continue in the Father and in the Son. But he's not saying continue in the Holy Ghost. See, we got the scripture that says that the um, if any man have not um, Christ, it says, um, if any man have not the Spirit, the spirit of Christ, um, he is none of his. So he in that same scripture, he talk about, he call it the spirit of Christ, and he says the spirit of God. So that spirit of Christ, the spirit of God, we know that's the Holy Ghost. But when the apostles address the Father, when they address um, the, the deity in heaven, they acknowledge and they greet the Father and the Son. All right. So they greet by saying father and son. They never say Holy Ghost. And why is that? Because that spirit, that Holy Ghost, even though there is three that bear record in heaven, the father, the word, the Holy Ghost. We know that the son is the word. So the father, word, Holy Ghost. We know that that's three that bear witness in heaven. But the apostles don't greet the Holy Ghost. They greet the Father and the Son. And the reason I believe that is so is because that Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is the Spirit of God and it's the Spirit of Christ. So, so, um, you know, so I'm not sure why there was offense taken. Maybe I had said something wrong there. And if I said something wrong, trust me, there was no intention. My intention was just to prove what the Scriptures, what the Bible says. So, um, there is a Father, Son, Holy Ghost. There is a three. But the uh, in, the, in the God, the Father, we know he's God. We know that the Son, he's God. And the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts chapter 5 is proven to be God. And we know that the Son proceeded for and came from the Father. We know that the Holy Ghost proceeded from the Father. All right? But we only see two thrones. We see the throne of God the Father, and we see Jesus, who the Bible says in Revelation 3, 2 to 1, he says, to him that overcome will I grant to sit with me on my throne, even as I overcame and am set with my Father in his throne. But we don't have the Holy, we don't have the acknowledgement of the Holy Ghost having a throne. But do I believe in Trinity? If, if the Trinity is three separate gods, then I got to say, then the Bible don't say there are three separate gods, but the Bible does say, Jesus says in John 17, 3, that the Father was the only true God. All right. But then he also acknowledged himself as being Jesus Christ, the Father's son. All right. The apostles acknowledged it. They acknowledged that there is a Holy Ghost. And Jesus said that Holy Ghost was going to live in us. But the Bible also says that it, it, the Bible mentioned how God is in us. All right. So if God is in us, then that's the Holy Spirit. So that's the Spirit of God, and that's the Spirit of Christ. So we continue in the Father, and we continue in the Son. But the Father and the Son is in us by the Holy Spirit. All right? So I hope you got to, um, you know, you can understand that. And I hope that we are all willing to accept any biblical correction because it's done out of love. It's done because the person want to see you in truth. You know, sometimes I may I may have say some, said something and guess what? Correct me. 
Correct me if you see I'm in fault. Don't let me go on preaching something falsely. Correct me if I'm wrong with scripture. And if I'm really sincere about being in God's truth, I got to accept that correction. All right. So, man, brother, I, I, hey, man, I love you. I love all the believers, man. We all got to hold each other accountable. If I see error, it's OK to point it out. Why? Because you're my brother and I love you and I want to see you in truth. All right. Now, if we still come to the, you know, decision later, well, I, I'm not going to agree with you, then that's fine. But at least we can say, hey, I did my part. I tried to show my brother. I, I tried to show my sister or my sister tried to show me or my brother tried to show me. And I just didn't accept it. Why? Because I got my own point of view of what I see. But we can only accept correction you know we can only reanalyze I so I encourage everyone if someone coming to you with something that contrary to what you believe look at it make sure you got it right make sure you in God's truth don't never just go and have pride and say well no I got it right they got it wrong no re look at what they showing you so that you can make sure you got it right and just see what people got to say now, I'm not talking about the devils out here I'm talking about the the ones who you know are believers if they saying something contrary, well, look at what they got to say. Have that biblical conversation. Have that that um, that um dialogue so that you can see if you got it right or not. And even if y'all come to a disagreement at the end of the day, it, at least you looked at it. At least you took time to consider to make sure you was in truth. Because if we got to let the Bible correct us. If someone show us scripture that corrects us, it shows us to be in error. It shows us to be liars. Well, we got to be a liar. Let God be true. You know, because in the end of the day, God is the truth. His word is the truth, not us. We filthy. We liars. We fornicators and all. We have been that. We may not be that no more, but we have been that. But God has never been that. So God's word is true. So we just got to humbly accept correct. I'm willing to accept correction. I don't need to get offended by it. I'm not going to cut off my fellow brother or sister because they try to correct me. No, don't do that. You know, let's just, just consider what someone want to show you when they fellow brothers and sisters, some devil coming to you that don't even believe the Bible. Don't even listen to them, but a fellow brother or sister, see what they got to say. All right. Hey, anybody watching me, you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, you don't believe in his death, burial, and resurrection, do that. Repent of your sins. Believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. Get baptized in his name. Get your sins washed away, man. We never know when our last day going to be. Let's all repent. Let's fight against this flesh together. Let's pray for each other because it's hard out here. And we just got to be strong and we got to support each other. All right? We got to correct each other. We got to pray for one another. And I'll see y'all in the next video.